Hi guys, what is up and welcome to my channel. So today I have decided to go back to basics with you guys. I want to talk about the exposure triangle with you. I know this is a big head scratcher for beginners, so I want to break it down for you. What it does and what it consists out of. Okay, so what is the exposure triangle and what does it do? The exposure triangle consists out of three elements, namely shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And these three elements help you to create properly exposed photos. And if you understand the exposure triangle, it can also help you to create beautiful low-key and high-key photos. Low-key photos is your dark and moody photos, where high-key is your bright photos. Okay, so let's start with ISO. ISO controls your camera sensitivity to light. A higher ISO number means more light, which makes your photo lighter and brighter. Where a lower ISO number makes your photos darker. The higher your ISO number, the lighter and brighter your photos will be. But be careful because this also increases the noise or grain in your photos. And the lower your ISO number is, the darker your photos will be. But it also means less to no grain or noise. So to sum it up, low ISO is less sensitive to light. It is darker but it maintains the rich colors of your image. High ISO means more sensitive to light. So your images will be lighter, but you do run the risk of grain and noise and those do lower the quality of your image. So when to use a high ISO and when to use a low ISO. So a 100 to 200 will be sunny outside or outside in the shade. Around 400 will be a sunny day, but you're taking photos inside. Around 600 will be for a cloudy day inside. Around 800 will be for an overcast day when you're shooting outside and 1000 will be for a task. Around 1200 will be inside with artificial light and then 2000 will be in a dark room with little light. And anything above 4000 your images will appear very grainy. So at around between 100 to 800 your photos will be crisp and clear around 800 to 3200 there will be some visible grain or noise and then anything after that your photos will become fuzzy and full of noise which you don't want okay so moving on to the next element on the triangle shutter speed so this controls how long your camera shutters stay open and adjusting the shutter speed will change how moving objects are recorded and also affects how the camera shake is recorded. The higher your shutter speed, the less light gets in. So your images will be darker, but you will be able to freeze action. The lower your shutter speed, the more light gets in. But this means your images or your subject will most likely be blurred if it is a moving subject. So to sum this up for you guys, high shutter speed means darker images, less light, but you get to freeze action. So a high shutter speed will be great for any moving subject or sports and it will also prevent the blur if you handheld your camera. And the faster shutter speed also means your images is more sharper. And then the last element on triangle, aperture. So this controls the amount of light that is passing through your camera's lens. Adjusting your aperture will also change the depth of field. So it will affect how much of the shot is in focus. You know those blurry backgrounds in photos? Yeah, that's that aperture. Okay, so the aperture does get a little bit confusing because when you talk about a small aperture, you mean a bigger number like your f16 or f32. When you talk about a large or a wide aperture, you mean your f1.8 or your f4. Confusing when I mean, you talk about large and big, but you bring in small numbers and you talk about small and 
you have all these large numbers. So just keep that in mind. So to make it easier to remember, the smaller the number, bigger the opening, the more the light. So a large or a wide aperture will also mean a blurred background, where a smaller aperture will mean your background will be more in focus. So if you can just understand these three elements of the triangle, your photos will improve and you will also be able to shoot anything in any condition. Yes, this will take a little while to get used to and to learn, but it is a big part of photography. And by knowing the effect you want to achieve, it will determine which exposure setting you need to choose first. So if you want a blurred background, you will start with the aperture first. If you are photographing a moving object, you will want to start with your shutter speed first. If it is a dark room, you would want to start with your ISO first. In addition to the role in exposure, the choice of ISO, shutter speed and aperture have a significant impact on the look and feel of your images. So if you can get the hang of this relationship, you will gain much more control over every image that you take. Since you made it this far, I do have a little tip for you guys. When you increase the exposure of one of these elements, you need to reduce it for one or both of the other elements in order to maintain the same exposure. I do hope this video helped you guys a little bit and also gave you a better understanding on those three elements. You guys are more than welcome to leave your questions down below as this is a subject that most beginners do struggle with. I mean, I know I did. It's like riding a bike. Once you understand it, it actually comes naturally to you. Thank you guys for watching my video and if you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and please do remember to subscribe down below for other videos. See you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye guys. Shutter speed. Shutter speed. <sighs> Understand. Uh, and also. Uh, and also if you understand these three. <sighs> and these three elements help you to probably. To probably. Well, it consists out of three. Uh,